And there's such a connection, as we all know, to what you eat and your health that it, it makes sense to really engage the healthcare sector in this work. Welcome to Off the Chart with Medical Economics, a podcast featuring lively and informative conversations with healthcare experts, opinion leaders, and practicing physicians about the challenges facing doctors and medical practices. I'm your host, Keith Reynolds, and today we feature an interview between Medical Economics Summer Intern Grace Konecki and Alex Ashbrook, Director of WIC and Root Causes at the Food Research and Action Center. They're discussing food insecurity and how physicians can help their patients overcome that burden. I'm Alex Ashbrook. I direct WIC and Root Causes at the Food Research and Action Center, known as FRAC. And FRAC, for more than 50 years, has been working to end poverty-related hunger in the U.S. through advocacy, research, advancing bold and equitable policy solutions, and through partnerships. And we partner with many healthcare providers and systems, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, Kaiser Permanente, and both big and small healthcare providers across the country. So what are the benefits integrating federal nutrition programs into healthcare? Well, food insecurity is a significant health issue impacting tens of millions of patients across the U.S. And as you know, it increases the risk of poor health outcomes such as diabetes and hypertension and elevated blood pressure. And it contributes to increased healthcare utilization and also increased healthcare costs. So addressing food insecurity in a healthcare situation is is critical to improving the health, nutrition, and well-being of patients um, who, and there are millions and millions of people who face food insecurity. So if you do not address um, th- that what's what's driving their food insecurity, you're going to see both devastating health consequences, um, poor health consequences in the short term and in the long term. Okay, awesome. And then are there any limitations healthcare providers may face when trying to connect patients to federal nutrition programs? Well, one of the things is that there's so many opportunities to connect patients to federal nutrition programs like SNAP and WIC. These are well-studied interventions with with all kinds of documented benefits to improving health. And these programs really serve as foundational interventions that healthcare providers can avail themselves of. Uh, SNAP is our nation's first line of defense against hunger. And One of the things that people may not be familiar with is that, you know, we have an amazing, robust, charitable food network, but SNAP, for every meal that the Feeding America Network provides, SNAP provides nine meals. So the strength and reach of the SNAP intervention is deep, and it's also available in every location throughout the the United States. And there's significant gaps where people who are eligible for SNAP are not participating in SNAP. For instance, if you if you look at the older adult population, only about one in two older adults who's eligible for SNAP can partic- is, is currently participating in it. And then there are interventions like the WIC program. It's a vital program for improving the health of children and pregnant and postpartum individuals. Um, we know that WIC you know, not only provides healthy food, but it also provides nutrition education, breastfeeding, counseling, and support. And it's it's a gateway to healthcare and social services referral to more than 6, 6.6 million people across the United States. And WIC is already um, a, a program that's reaching about half the babies in the United States participate in WIC. But when children turn, when, when these babies turn one years old, many of, of the families lose access to WIC. So there's a there's a WIC gap, and only about 50% of eligible WIC families are participating in the program. So having healthcare providers 
address these gaps is a is a really smart and evidence-based strategy to improving the health of patients. Our healthcare professionals to do so much. Um, one of the benefits of connecting patients to these programs are that they're partnership opportunities um, in pretty much every community to do this. So there's, there's some healthcare providers who are in a position where they have social workers or care coordinators who can help families apply for WIC. Sometimes they have um, a WIC clinic that's co-located on site. Um, if, if the healthcare providers are connecting people to Medicaid, in, in many instances, it's not much more of a lift to make sure the patient is also applying for SNAP. But there are also opportunities to refer out to a wide range of community-based partners. Um, and you know, while giving someone a flyer with information on how to apply for SNAP or a number to call for a community-based organization to help you apply is better than nothing. They're much more effective strategies um, in the form of warm referrals. So, so having a system in place that when a patient screens positive for food insecurity, then in the, in the medical records, there's already a partnership developed where that patient, you know, through HIPAA compliant mechanisms is connected to a community organization that can then actually either call the, the patient or send a text to the patient and offer to assist them in, in seeing what programs they're eligible for. And if they're eligible, connecting them to programs like SNAP and WIC, school meals, summer EBT, and then a wide range of community-based programs, um, such as food, food pantries, food shelves, um, sometimes farmers markets. So there, there are a lot of nutrition interventions available. It's just figuring out the process that works for your clinic. How are federal nutrition programs being used as a primary intervention for healthcare systems to address food insecurity and also improve patient nutrition and health? Well, we are seeing more and more health providers across the country screening people for social determinants of health, including food insecurity. And it's a natural step in terms of intervening to address food insecurity to connect patients to programs that exist in every corner of the country. So we, we see it as a primary um, activity before you, you go to more tailored programs to make sure that every patient who's eligible is connected to programs, um, the federal nutrition programs. And there are a lot of um, national momentum to do, do so. Uh, the Department of um, Human Services is, doing a lot of work around what, what's called food as medicine. And typically food as medicine looks at some of the more tailored food interventions. Um, there's a pyramid and at the top of the pyramid is connecting patients to medically tailored meals. However, if you look at all the different levels of the pyramid at the primary level is making sure, you know, that people are, are connected to the federal nutrition programs. And then those can reach millions of people. And there's already funding available to do this work and to, to cover the state cost of the benefits. Uh, the White House actually had its first conference on uh, hunger, nutrition and health in 50 years, about almost two years ago. And at that conference, there was a real call for the healthcare sector to work, to screen, to address food insecurity, and then to intervene by connecting patients to food and nutrition resource, resources. So there's a lot of uh, national energy to make sure that the healthcare sector is, is doing doable and smart work to connect people to these programs. In FRAC's new research brief, it mentions key steps to ensure patients can access these federal nutrition programs. So what steps are the most important for healthcare providers to take to guarantee this? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I think there's still a lack of information out there so that everyone um, is familiar with all the different federal nutrition programs. So a key step is just awareness, uh, making sure that healthcare providers have information on what are the eligibility requirements for SNAP, which can differ slightly state to state. Um, for WIC, often people think of WIC as a program 
for babies and they may not realize that families with children up to age five are eligible. So awareness so that all these programs are represented in the clinic and that there's someone who's a steward of, of having that information and knowing when a family may or may not be eligible for a program is the first step. Um, the second step is there are a lot of materials out there to educate providers. Uh, we partnered with the American Academy of Pediatrics to create a toolkit for pediatricians on screening and intervening to address food insecurity. FRAC also partnered with the AARP to create an online course for healthcare providers who work with older adults to learn about food insecurity, its harms, and then how to address those hard harms by connecting older adults and their families to the federal nutrition programs. So making sure you've done your homework, I guess, is the first step. And then the second step is to figure out, you know, as you noted, what model is going to work best for your clinic? There's not one size fits all, but there are different models that organizations have been using that, that may provide lots of guidance for you if you work at a hospital or if you're at a... Um, private clinic. I, I guess the final thing is to, you know, to make sure that you're asking the screening questions and have resources on hand. You, you may think that because you're located in a, an affluent neighborhood or there are very few patients that you see who are on Medicaid that no one is suffering from food insecurity. And unfortunately, the food insecurity is often invisible. You need to ask the right questions of patients. And People go in and out of food insecurity. You may have um, someone who's from a um, well-off family, but is experiencing a divorce and all of a sudden is in the throes of food insecurity. So don't assume that you don't have any food insecure patients um, because unfortunately, probably every practice has families that are struggling against hunger. Yeah, I think those are definitely like good steps to mention. And yeah, I definitely think awareness is extremely important with that. Um, the brief also mentioned successful models of connecting patients to SNAP and WIC programs. Um, I know we've been talking about how not one model fits all, but which models have been the most successful and how can healthcare providers also easily integrate those into their practices as well? Yeah, well, we have some great models where hospitals are doing this work in-house. They've trained their caseworkers and they're able to actually help patients apply for programs like SNAP, or they have co-located a WIC clinic at the hospital so they can give people a, a prescription for WIC and then they go down the hall and actually um, take the next steps to apply. So if you can catch patients where they are, that's, that's a very successful model. We also have some great models where anti-hunger groups are partnering with healthcare providers, be it to train healthcare providers on awareness so they know about the different programs or actually partnering for warm, warm referrals where a healthcare provider will send information and then they can the um, anti-hunger group can follow up with the patient. So FRAC has um, two state initiatives, DC Hunger Solutions, which is partnering with Kaiser Permanente to help connect more patients to SNAP. Um, another great model is Maryland Hunger Solutions. They, um, help, they help healthcare providers screen for food insecurity, and then they help families that are eligible for SNAP get connected to SNAP. So those are just some examples. Um, the, the research brief does point out that while we have reams of research on the well-documented health um, improvements related to the federal nutrition programs, where we need more research is really digging into what are the models that doctors, uh, that healthcare organizations are using to connect people to these programs. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then what do you think this research means for the future of federal nutrition programs in healthcare? Well, you know, my gold star is for that is that every patient who is eligible for SNAP and WIC and school meals and other federal nutrition programs is seamlessly connected to these programs before they ever hit the health clinic. So ideally, we want to create systems outside the clinics so that it's seamless for people to connect to programs that have 
tested evidence for improving health, nutrition, and well-being. Um, as in the interim, we are asking healthcare providers to figure out if they're going to address social determinants of health. Food insecurity is one that many address first at at, at the first blush because you know you can give people um, food interventions. You know, at at the clinic, you may be partnering with a food bank, and you can distribute a grocery bag, or you can set up a food pharmacy, or you can give people cards to go to the grocery store. Um, and you can also connect people to the nutrition programs. Uh, so there are all these available interventions to address food insecurity. Whereas if you're looking at a social determinant of health, such as housing security, it's going to be a lot harder to address that social determinant of health. So people are starting with food insecurity. And there's such a connection, as we all know, to what you eat and your health, that it, it makes sense to really engage the healthcare sector in this work. Is there anything else physicians need to know about these programs to help their patients? Well, I think one, one thing that physicians um, should know about is that as fabulous as these programs are, there's always an opportunity to make them even stronger. So we have been partnering with healthcare providers for decades to lift up their trusted and expert voice to one, share how food insecurity impacts patients and how detrimental it is to their short-term and long-term health. And also to lift up their voice to share how it's so important to strengthen the programs. So with the Farm Bill coming up, you know, lifting up stories about food insecurity and its devastating impact and how connecting patients to SNAP is so important and how, you know, SNAP is a foundational program to addressing food insecurity, um, but we can improve it even more. So I encourage um, anyone who's interested in doing some, some advocacy to improve and strengthen our, our nutrition programs to uh, check out FRAC's website at www.frac.org. So, well, yeah, thank you again for your responses. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Again, that was Medical Economics Summer Intern Grace Konecki talking to Alex Ashbrook of FRAC. My name is Keith Reynolds, and on behalf of the whole medical economics team, I'd like to thank you for listening and ask that you please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Also, if you'd like a digest of the best stories Medical Economics publishes delivered straight to your email six days a week, subscribe to our newsletter at medicaleconomics.com. Thank you.